Welcome to Developing Graphics Frameworks with Python and OpenGL. Part 25, Geometry, Base Class, and Rectangles. In recent videos, we've talked about the overall structure of the graphics framework that we're going to be developing in this series of videos. And in the last video, you created the Object 3D class, which is one of the core classes in the framework, and some of its extensions. One of those extensions was called Mesh, and the Mesh class corresponds to the visible 3D objects in the scene. But to keep the code base modular, each mesh is composed of two objects, a geometry object, which defines the overall shape, and the material object, which defines the overall appearance. In this class, we're going to create the base geometry class, which will be extended for every different shape you might want to realize. And we'll create our first example of a geometry object, the rectangle class. So in the geometry class, we need to store attribute data, all the different vertex buffer data that needs to define the shape of our object, and we'll also store the total number of vertices. And we can actually calculate that. That'll be the length of any data array stored in an attribute. The class is extending this base class. They'll be responsible for adding the specific attribute objects to the dictionary. And for now, there's going to be two different types of attributes we'll work with. The first will be vertex positions. Every vertex shader needs to know where the vertices are going to be. The other object we're going to need, or the other attribute, will be vertex colors. And that's going to be so we can visualize what these shapes look like. For example, here we have the same shape rendered with and without vertex colors. And as you can probably guess from the image on the left, this shape is a cube. But notice that without vertex colors, we haven't learned about applying textures or shading or any of those special effects yet. Without the vertex colors to distinguish between the sides of a 3D object, we get no depth cues. It's kind of hard to understand what we're looking at. So for now, we're going to build in vertex colors into all the different geometric objects that we're going to create. So. We're going to open up our development environment. I'm a big fan of Sublime Text. And we're going to start creating geometry objects. Now, there's going to be a lot of different geometry objects. We're going to be creating rectangles and boxes, spheres, ellipsoids, cylinders, cones, prisms, pyramids, all sorts of things. And that core folder could get cluttered pretty quickly. So within the Python graphics folder, we're actually going to create a new subfolder and we're going to call it geometry. This will contain the geometry base class and all the other extensions of the geometry class that we'll need. So right now the geometry class is empty, right? Uh, these examples are not in the geometry folder because they're not indented underneath it in this diagram. If I right click, I'm going to make the first file. I'll immediately save that and we'll just call it geometry.py because this is going to be our base geometry class. So, really won't draw on anything else. Uh, so, this class is geometry, it's an object, and to initialize the geometry, Right, we're going to store attribute objects, but I don't need to import the attribute class because the base geometry class doesn't actually create the attributes. It's just going to create a dictionary to store the attributes. So a dictionary to store attribute objects. And we'll say self.attributes, plural. So usually be more than one, that dictionary. 
And we also need to store the number of vertices being rendered. That's used by the GL draw arrays function. And I'll call that vertex count. Uh, initially, I'll set it equal to none because we don't know how many vertices there will be. But there's an easy way to calculate this. All right, so we'll create a function called count vertices. And in this function, uh, what we'll do is we'll, we observe that the number of vertices is the length of any attributes or any attribute objects array of data. So in order to calculate this, it'll really help to automate this process. So what I want to do is within attributes, I'm going to type this up in a strange order to show you how I'm thinking about it. So within attributes, what I want to get is any one of those attribute objects. Right, so how do I just pull out one object from a dictionary? Well, first I'll retrieve the values. Remember dictionaries, items are stored as key value pairs. I just want to get the values. I'll convert that to a list. And then I'll just get the first item in the list, the item with index zero. And again, it doesn't matter which one we pick. And then vertex count will be equal to the length. See, within the attribute object, remember the array of data is stored in a field called data. All right, so the length of that array will tell us the number of vertices. All right, and that's really it for the geometry class. But it would be really helpful to see an example of how we're going to use this class. So next let's talk about rectangles. They're basically the simplest object that you can render other than a triangle, I guess. So a rectangle is made up of four vertices and we're going to group those into two triangles. I think we're going to group it into the triangle P0, P1 to P3 and the triangle from P0 to P3 to P2. Now to make this a flexible class to create rectangles of any dimensions, uh, the constructor will take two parameters, the width and height of the rectangle. And assuming that the rectangle is centered at the origin, once we know the width and the height, we can calculate the coordinates of each of these vertices. And this is just on the XY axis. We'll assume that the Z coordinate is always zero. Since the complete width is w, let's say, half the width is w over 2, so the x-coordinates are either going to be positive w over 2 or negative w over 2. And again, centered at the origin, the y-coordinates will therefore be half the height, h over 2, or negative half the height, negative h over 2. And so we'll have those two triangles. Now. The other thing we need to do is establish vertex colors so we can really see it. I, mean, I guess that's not as important for a two-dimensional rectangle, but let's get in the habit right now. So the colors of these vertices, uh, we'll store those with the variables C0, C1, C2, C3, so it's easy to change them later. Uh, and I'll use the colors white, red, green, and blue. And when listing these vertex colors, I'm going to want to put them in the same order, C0, C1, C3, and C0, C3, C2. I want to order them in the same way as we've ordered the positions of the vertices. Right, this ordering is the same as on the previous slide, 0, 1, 3, 0, 3, 2. And that'll create a really nice gradient effect because well, you might remember that the GPU interpolates the colors of every pixel by doing some weighted average combination of the vertex colors. Now, if you wanted to render each triangle with a single solid color, you could do that too. So for example, I could list the colors in this order, C0, C0, C0. That will 
color those three, the first color, and then C1, C1, C1. That'll color these vertices the next color. And notice that each vertex, or each position rather, can have more than one color. It depends on which triangle that vertex is considered to be a part of. Right? At some times, this position might be considered color C0, and at other times, this position may correspond to color C1. It all depends on the way these are arranged and grouped. I can't say much more about rectangles. It's now time to write some code. So let's head back to Sublime Text, and we're going to create another thing in the Geometry class. We're going to create a rectangle object. So within this folder, I'm going to go ahead and right click and make a new file. And I'll immediately save this and I'll call it uh, Rectangle Geometry. So I'll type that in over here uh, Rectangle Geometry.py. And in this class, uh, we're extending the Geometry class, so we'll need to import that. And remember, the geometry class is in a file named geometry within the folder named geometry. So th this is not redundant. And I want to import that geometry class, in this case with a capital G. We like to use capitals for our class names. Also, uh, from the core directory, we're going to start using attributes now. So from core.attribute, we're going to import attribute. Okay, and always be careful with those capitals. All right, let's define the class. Class Rectangle Geometry. It extends the Geometry class this time. And in the constructor, when we initialize this, uh, we're going to set the width and height. We'll also give them default values too. We'll say default values of 1 and 1. Uh, to start off, I want to initialize that attribute the attribute dictionary, which is defined in the geometry class. So in the geometry class, the super class, I need to call that init function right away. And then I'm going to define those vertices that we saw in those slides. So the first one is negative width over 2, negative height over 2, and it really exists in three dimensions. So that third coordinate is 0. I'll make life easier by copy-pasting this a couple of times. I just need to correct the signs. And so these are vertices 1, 2, and 3. And so I've got this kind of alternating pattern of signs with the x-coordinate and two negatives followed by two positives for the y-coordinate. Those are my vertices. Um, colors, I'm going to just fit those all in one line, I think. Uh, C0, C1, C2, C3. Of course, you can use different colors if you want. I'm using white, red, green, and blue. Remember, these are RGB colors, right? So the red component, green component, and blue component. Each are floating point numbers between 0 and 1. All right, so the position data, let's collect that into an array. Right, that's P0, P1, P3. That was the first triangle. And P0, P3, P2 was the second triangle. And color data, I want that to look exactly the same. So that's C0, C1, C3, C0, C3, C2. All right, I've got the arrays of data. Now, I need to create some attributes and then put them in the attributes dictionary. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the name in the dictionary, which is going to correspond to the attribute variable in the shader later. It'll be a while until we write the shader, but just let it be known that that's why I'm picking this particular name. So later on in the shader, we'll have an in variable called vertex position. It's going to be attached to this attribute. Remember, when we declare our attribute, that takes two parameters. First, a string, which tells you the data type. 
and then the array of data, which in this case is position data. All right, so we've loaded, we've created our first attribute and put it in the dictionary belonging to this class. And then we're going to do the same thing for vertex colors. So self.attributes. Uh, this will be attached to an invariable called vertex color. Again, that's an attribute of type VEC3. That's going to be connected to the color data array. Now that we've actually put in these arrays of data, now we can actually count the vertices just by running the count vertices function. Right? Remember how that works. It's going to go into the attribute dictionary and it's going to count how many objects are in one of these attributes. And the answer is six because there's six vertices to be rendered. And that's about it. Um, unfortunately, it's going to take a while until we get to the framework to the place where we can actually create an application window and render this. Right? First, we're going to need to create materials, and then we're going to need to create the renderer class as well. But before we go on to creating materials, we're going to create a 3D object as well. The rectangle class is a good introduction to how geometries work, but the next class we'll create, the box class, will give us our first 3D object. And then from that point on, the plan is to create materials and then the renderer class so we can actually see some of these objects in action as soon as possible. But that's it for this video. We'll see you in the next one.